Um, if animals are pure positive energy. They are wonderful teachers. You are all pure positive energy. They are more likely to remain that in their physical body. Although they do tend to act a bit like you if they hang around you much. <laughs> So the apparent violence and cruelty that I see in animals towards each other sometimes, um, I guess that confuses me as... Well, that's part of that superimposing what you mean over them. In other words, it's not an easy thing to perceive through the eyes of an animal because the only perception you hold is your own. Mm -hmm. And so when you see animal behavior and then you try to see two humans standing there, your assumption is that they're thinking like you would be thinking if you were standing there, and that's never the case. People talk about animals, and uh, very o the big thing with so many people is not thinking that they should be used so much for food. And we always tease our human friends a little bit by saying that you might be able, with enough time and enough determination, to get your world to pass laws that prohibit the human consumption of animals, but you'll never be able to pass enough laws to prohibit the animal consumption of animals. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot more animals eating animals than there are humans eating animals. In other words, it, it is the nature of them. And so we would not try too hard to see through the eyes of the beast because you really cannot understand where they are coming from. Esther remembers watching the, the little astrolorp hen. She named her Henny Penny. And she was a beautiful, gentle little hen that was so gentle, just her nature, that Esther could pick her up and carry her around or stroke her. She would actually sit on Esther's lap and let her pet her like a cat. She was a very sweet little bird. And one day, the big black rooster herded her into the corner behind the air conditioner and insisted that she lay her egg there. And Esther thought that was really remarkable because Henny Penny had always laid her eggs in the nest, just like all of the other girls. But now the rooster had somehow lost his mind and was insisting that she do it otherwise. And she was obeying, and so she laid her egg. And then the next day he herded her there again. And for 21 days he herded her to that spot, and she laid 21 eggs. And then she sat, and when she tried to get off the nest, the rooster insisted that she stay there. And he would occasionally bring her a bug or something to eat. But for the most part, that bird just sat on that nest. And during that time, Esther said her entire personality changed. Esther said she went from a youthful little spring chicken to an old mother hen. And then Esther said, hmm, how much of our conversation comes from watching chickens? And then Henny Penny gave 21 days of sitting and several of the eggs hatched. And now there are these little black cotton balls that are running around with Henny Penny. And Henny Penny is the most attentive mother. She would scratch and the little chickens would rush in and she would scratch and the little chickens would rush in and she would scratch. And Esther thought, this is the sweetest parenting I've ever seen. It fit with all of Esther's ideas of what a good mother should be. She sacrificed herself. She sat on that nest. She did not have anything to eat or drink for 21 days. She obeyed her husband. <laughs> she did all of the things that she was supposed to do and then she gave birth to these little chickens. It was just perfect to superimpose human done over the chickens. And then these little chickens followed their mother around for a few days, for a few weeks actually. And then one day, Esther was there when it happened, the little chicken came up to its mother just like it had done a hundred times before, and Henny Penny pecked the chicken on the head and said, get lost, chick. <laughs> And the little chicken tumbled into the grass. She could hardly believe what was happening. She went back and said, But mother, but mother, remember me. I'm your favorite. You've never done this to me before. And Henny Penny pecked her on the head again. And then the other chicks came round. And every chick that came to this mother that had been tended to her, she had been digging their worms. She had been preparing their food. She had been sitting on them every night to keep them warm. Suddenly, they were like little stranger chickens to her. She did not want anything to do with them. She wanted to instill within them the independence that had given her so much joy. And on that day, she cut the ties. And on that day, they understood it. And they lived happily ever after, all of them, you see. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot understand what's going on in the minds of the beasts in other words they have a whole different cultural intention they were born with different reasons don't superimpose your human tendencies over them give them a break and yourself too <laughs> and myself too thank you yes